Hello, we are coming live. We got it figured out. Tension in the neck. And from here, roll the way forward, lift the hips up, find your maximum stretch. Pull with the arms, roll the way forward, and lift the hips up high. Breathing nice and easy, roll the way forward into the toes, pushing the knees back. I just caught a, a glimpse of Ben's flowery uh, short. His uh, criminal costume, that's amazing. Maybe in high def, you can zoom in later on. Last chance now, roll the way forward, lift the hips up, push the knees back, change. Come up, arms over your head. Slowly come up, arms down by your side. All right, next is Aqua Post Utkatasana. We're going to do one set of this one, so make it count. It's going to get the legs fired up. So right foot steps to your right, roughly six inches. And really what we're looking for is hip width distance. Everyone's a little bit different, right? But you should go to fit two fifths width between your feet. And your feet are parallel like a number 11 or letter H. Now arms up parallel the floor. Squeeze your triceps. Suck your stomach in. And in part one, sit down and back. Push your hips back. Imagine there's someone really, really cute behind you. And you're putting the vibe out. So it's like, hey, in the club, reach those hips back. I guarantee you will not be sheltering at home alone if you do this posture correctly. That's a promise. Engage your triceps, squeeze the arms, and find that spot where it's really challenging, where you're feeling the burn in the legs. Don't find the spot where it's easy. Change, cut them up. Now we got part two up on your tippy toes, like a ballerina up on point for a ballerino in Ben's case, right? Keep those hips up as high as you can. Squat down now on top of the toes. Imagine you're sliding straight down the wall. So the spine is trying to stay perpendicular to the floor. And imagine you got 10 inch high heels on, ladies. These are not work pumps. These are getting back at your ex boyfriend who cheated on you pumps. Friday night, there should be a fishbowl heels in here, 10 inch stilettos. That's what I want. And again, if you go too low, so that it's easier, find that point where the leverage is difficult. Hold it there. Okay, he's holding it. She's going lower. She's holding it. Change. Come up. All right, now we got part three. Squeeze the knees together. Imagine I'm putting my brand new AMS black card right through the knees. If you do not drop the black card, we're going shopping wherever you want to go. So roll the way forward halfway on the toes. Hold that credit card there and now slide straight down. Your legs are zipped up. You're sliding down the wall. You're controlling it down for a 10 count if you can. And then the temptation here is to rest on the calves. I do it all the time. But we want to try to avoid that. Try to point the knees down and lift the hips up and hover off the calves. If you have control here and you have your balance, try just bouncing up and down if it feels okay. Right, nice and easy, up and down, and on the upward bounce, stop and hold, hover, and now come up one inch. And now come up one more inch. And now come up one, up, change, slowly come up. Just kidding, kind of. Foot back, arms down by your side. All right, last posture in the warm up phase of this class. It's eagle pose, Gaurasana. So toes and heels are together. Look at your left arm, look at your right arm. Make sure you know which is which, muy importante. Arms up over your head, palms together. And now bring your right arm underneath the left. Palms back down, thumbs towards your face, pinkies towards the mirror, suck your stomach in, and now sit down nice and low. So go to your half squat. From here, lift the right leg up, over, and around, around the toes of your right foot around the left half muscle. So we got Julie, Becky, and Rosie joining us in this posture. I can see all of you. I can tell you need to bring the hips down a little more. Pull the elbows down. Try to get those fingertips below the nose. And you're squeezing, wringing the arms and the legs out. Chest up nice and high. Sit down a bit deeper. Change. Come up. Other side. Arms over your head. Now left arm underneath the right arm. Palms back together. Thumbs towards your face. Piggy fingers towards the mirror. Pull the elbows down. Suck the stomach in. Sit down nice and low. Now lift the left leg up over around. You may not be close to getting your foot around. That's fine. You just do the best you can. Eventually, in time, the foot will get around. Now, what this posture is doing is warming up 12 joints, compressing the arterial system, the reproductive system, squeeze and ring. Uh, we have uh, you know, warn all our gentlemen who maybe have had the vasectomy snip snip. This posture is the vasectomy reverser, so be careful. Don't squeeze too hard for you guys. All right, chest up, elbows down. Keep on sitting down just a bit deeper and change. Come up, arms over your head, arms down. Party time. Grab a sip of water. So it's at this point, real quick water break. 
We recommend that you don't sip on water those first few postures. We're just, you know, it's 10 minutes to try to get warmed up. From now on, you can drink uh, water, sip water in between postures, or really whenever you need to at home. And the classic yoga etiquette when you're in class is to try to sip in between poses or in between sets, not right in the middle. So there's your fun tip for today. Now we're going to the standing balancing series. Every posture, we're balancing on one leg. You're going to shift your weight to your left knee and bend the right knee. Squeeze your left quad, suck the stomach in, round over, grab your right foot, all 10 fingers interlaced and solid. So you have no knee. So what I want to see of Ben here in his, uh, in his prisoner pants and Kathy and her amazing uni, right, or amazing onesie there, is I want you to lock that left knee. I want you to think about squeezing your quads at this muscle right above your knee. Make a muscle and squeeze. We want to contract that muscle for 60 seconds. So it is building endurance here. We're building stability. Now, as long as you keep the left leg locked, we slowly, gently begin to kick the right heel forward. And depending upon your flexibility, the foot may move an inch, like right where Ben is, or if you're really flexible, maybe it moves all the way out. But the temptation is to bend the standing knee. We want to keep that leg locked. If you can get both knees locked all the way out, you're kicking out. Then you're going to pull the toes back towards your face. You're going to pull the elbows down below the knee, and eventually touch your head to the knee. This is assuming both knees are locked. Now change, right foot down, relax. So these are balancing postures. You might fall out of them. We expect you to fall out, right? If you never fall out, you're probably not trying hard enough. If you fall out of the pose, just take a breath, relax, try it again. And balance is funny. Some days you can balance forever, and some days it's like you're just hopping around on one leg the entire pose. Just take what the body gives. So shift the weight to the right foot now, bend the left leg. Go to the other side. Left leg up. I like old school karate kid entry. That's your choice, up to you. Round over, grab your left foot with a good, solid, strong grip. All 10 fingers are interlaced. And once again, you have no knee. Pull the belly in, squeeze the quad, and if you can keep the leg locked, kick the left foot up. And so our teacher, Mark, is, is uh, rhyming in or chiming in from the outside. He's watching, and he's giving feedback to Kathy and Ben saying they're not trying hard enough. So we're going to make them try harder. He's probably eating a cookie right now. It's amazing. If you've got both knees locked, you can pull the toes back. If you can keep them locked, then pull the elbows down. If you can get the elbows down below the knee, you can bring the head to touch the knee. Kathy's showing she's going for it right here. Ben's doing what I do. Some of us may have to hang out right here in this posture. I appreciate them demonstrating this for you guys. Head up, arms straight, change, left leg down. So let's say, by the way, that you're currently, you can't quite grab your foot yet, right? You tighten the hips, maybe you've got a power ab in the way. But you can always start here by grabbing the knee, and then what we want you to do over time is slowly work your way down. That's a great option, too. So let's do it one more time. Shift your weight to your left leg, bend the right knee, just standing at the knee pose. Dandem on a challenge, Shavasana. Right leg comes up, round over, grab your right foot with a good solid grip. You have no knee. Look forward and find a point to focus on it in front of you. Finding a focal point definitely helps the balance. Keeping the left leg locked, slowly kick the right heel up and away. You'll probably find your balance is better in this set and your flexibility is better as well. If both legs are locked, toes back. If they're still locked, pull the elbows down below the knee. If you can get the elbows down below the knee, bring the head to touch the knee. If you can do that, if you can get your elbows locked, legs locked, then you can just go hands free, right? Change. Right leg back. Can't even go before I like it. All right, we got one more standing head to knee. Shift your weight to the right foot, left leg up, grab your left foot, good solid grip. Don't be in a hurry. We want you guys to try hard. We want you to give a maximum effort, but don't be, in, you know, don't move so, so in a hurried fashion. You can be quick, but not in a hurry, right? All right, lock that right leg. Keep that right leg locked, and from here, go ahead and kick the left leg forward. If all you're doing is trying to grab your foot and trying to balance and lock your knee for the duration of the pose, you are getting 100% benefit. Everyone's trying at their max levels. My veterans, go for it. Whatever the deepest version of the pose is for you, proceed. If you're just trying to balance, you are going to get more out of this posture than the advanced students. So keep going. Check. Come up. Foot comes down. Let's do a little backward bend, right? Bring the hands on the low back. Just drop the head back. I had that intense forward bend. The backward bend feels kind of nice. And especially though the low back pain they're working on, 
working through. Anytime you do a forward bend, really make sure you're engaging that transverse abdominis or it's your deep abdominal wall. So pull the navel in. Yogis, we call it a banda. But when you engage that deep abdominal wall as you're flexing your spine, it provides stability and support. So we don't want any, any looseness here in forward bends. All right, so now we have Dada Mona Dada Ross in a standing boat pulling pose. So toes and heels are together. Bring your right hand up like you're asking me for money and hold that money in your hand right out of the side. Right hand goes down. Now grab your right ankle from the inside. You feel the ankle bone in the palm of your hand. You'll notice your thumb is pointing backwards. If you're having problems with balance here, it's really difficult. We have ballet bars in the yoga room. Don't be afraid to hold onto a wall or something at first when you're rolling this pose. Reach your left arm up nice and tall. Squeeze the knees together. And from here, kick your right leg up and back, charge your body forward, reach your left arm out. This is the bow pulling pose. Let your right shoulder disappear behind the left shoulder. You're pulling the bow and arrow back. Look right down the fingertips, stretch your arm forward, and the kick is the engine in this pose. Fingers pointed forward, breathing. And this posture is ultimately 50% reaching, 50% kicking. And the goal eventually is to do standing splits, right? It's really not that far. Change, wow. Well, well. All right. Do you, do you want to go to a face this way for the, the audience this time? Turn the face aside like that. So now I just want you to be able to see what it looks like on the side and the front. Let's do the left side up. Left hand up. Out, down, grab the left ankle from the inside. Reach your right arm up. What you may find if you have tight quadriceps. Let the sternum is tight, the flexors is that left knee's gonna to want to flare out. So if you feel left knee flaring out, it's okay, work on bringing it back in if possible. From here, kick the left leg up and back. Start the posture with a kick. The kick is the engine of this pose. Nice and steady, no hurry, but you are working really hard here. Reach the right arm down. Of course, we're continuing to breathe. When you work really hard and focus on your breath, it's tempting to hold your breath. Keep breathing in and out through the nose. Reach the right arm up, kick the toes up. I'm gonna get out of the camera shot here. You can see how impressive our prisoner is today. Keep on reaching and kick. You got it, Captain. Go for it and kick and kick and kick. She's gonna hit my hand. Change. Nice. Right arm down. Okay, take a breath or two. We're gonna do that one more time. So, what we really find, um, at least I personally find this posture, is the second set's always better. Your body's gotta figure out what you're asking of it. You're getting warmer and warmer, so you're gonna crush set number two. Here we go, right hand up, out, down. Grab the right ankle from the inside. Feel the ankle bone in the palm of your hand. Reach the left arm up nice and tall. Good. Squeeze the knees in tight. And from here now, kick the right leg up and back. Breathe slow. You know where you can go already. Body's coming down parallel on the floor, kicking the right foot up, reach the fingertips out. Right shoulder just appearing behind the left shoulder. You have the bow and arrow. You're like a Greek mythological, mythological figure right now. Keep going. I said, Kathy, just like a Greek mythological figure. Kick and stretch and reach. Change. Nice. Great job, everyone. All right, now we got left side. Take it at home with standing bow. Left hand down. Down. Grab the left ankle from the side. Reach your right arm up. Squeeze the knees together. And now from your kick, the left leg up and back. Charge the body forward. Breathe out your left hand posture. Oh, boy. Not to keep you the connection, but the dancer pose is a little bit different. So keep reaching out. This is the way we do this one here. She's going to turn it on. It's always great to give someone a, a little target to shoot for. She has no mirror. She can't see it, so she has to imagine it's there. Keep going and kick and stretch and kick and reach and kick and stretch. Change. Woo! Woo! Right arm down. Okay. Nice and done. So we have one more posture in the balancing series. It's a balancing stick to the dasana. We're only going to do one set of this one. It's not very long. It's about 10 seconds on each side. So if you blink, you're probably going to miss it. So here we go. Go ahead and come to the back of your tower mat. You want room to step forward. I think Don and Rusty are doing this class with us right now, too. I'm watching you. No cheating in this one, Don. All right, here we go. Arms up over your head, interlace all 10 fingers, release the index fingers, cross your thumbs. Right foot steps forward, a good solid step. And now, boom, go. Charge your body forward. We're making a perfect capital T. 
I'm going to point your belly button to the floor to level the hips. Reach your arms out in front of you. Reach your toes back. Someone's grabbing your arms and someone's grabbing your legs, pulling you apart. Change. Come up. Step back. We're doing the other side now. Kathy, I want you to turn and face this way so they can see you from the side. Now the left leg steps forward. A good solid step. And go. Boom. Charge your body forward. Lift the right leg up. Reach your arms out in front of you. We want to avoid looking like a broken umbrella by yogis here. It looks amazing. Point the belly button down. Reach the right leg back. Reach the arms forward. Come up. Step point back. And relax. I always look like a broken umbrella on that one. So we're really good that I'm not picking this one today. All right. Last thing of our bouncing series, we're now moving to our standing separate leg stretching series. So move to the left side of your towel or mat. You can go ahead and, and uh, we'll just step on the side because it's not right to free today here. And first is Dhamma Mana Vipapta Pada Hashimutanasana, right? So arms over your head, palms together, right foot steps in a row, right? Arms come down the floor. That's standing separate leg stretching, by the way. Turn the toes in, pigeon and toe. Inhale, exhale, fold from the hips, one eye forward. And if you have a mirror in front of you, check out how cool you look right now. And then you can drop the arms down. So our goal here is to keep the legs locked. And if you're flexible enough, ideally we're going to grab underneath the heel so we can pull. But not everyone can do that. So maybe you have to grab more toward the toes, or maybe you have to grab the big toes. Or if you're really tight and stiff right now, you put the hands on the floor in front of you. But keep the legs locked. Now if you're able to lock the legs and grab both part of the feet, then you begin to pull. The elbows bend. Shoulder blades engage or attracting from the scapula, and we're using our strength to help pull us toward the floor. I always think about touching your eyebrows to the floor if possible. Things don't count, right? But if you're nowhere close to the floor, right, then you're going to bring the feet further apart. That makes it a little more reachable. If your head's already to get on the floor, Scott Needham, right, then you can bring your feet close together and work on it a little bit harder. So the goal of is to get the feet a little closer. Okay, arm by your side. Come up. We're going to go right into our triangle pose. So turn the right foot out to your right. Bend the right knee. And now lunge down nice and deep. The knees going 90 degrees. But it can be shown to be like 120 degrees. Right? So lunge, lunge, bend, and straighten your leg more. Now bend to this a little bit. This is what I see a lot. I don't want that. I want 99 or showing the right leg. You're beautiful. You're a fencer. You're holding in a peg. Right? This is a deep lunge. Now chest up. Now first move, I want you to just move your arms. Right arm down, left arm up. Now reach down just enough to press the right knee back with the right elbow. Maybe graze the big toe with your fingertips. Look to the ceiling, reach your left arm up. This is a great posture that builds mobility, obviously, but endurance, cardiovascular fitness. You're probably going to be breathing a little hard in this one. Good. That's the point. Push the right knee back. Reach the left arm up, breathe in and out through the nose. This is the marriage of the heart and lungs. How is the marriage between your heart and lungs? How's it doing with the self quarantine? Change, come up, right foot in, left foot out, bend that left knee, lunge on down, knee 90 degrees, get your hips down low, hips forward, shoulders back, and try just the arms first so we don't overreach. And now reach down just enough to press the left knee back with the left elbow. Fingertips to the big toes, reach the right arm up, chin down to the right shoulder. So reach, actively try to touch the ceiling. Reach your left arm down. We're opening up. So it's hip mobility, thoracic mobility, shoulder mobility, strength. Keep reaching, keep holding it, and change. Come up. Left foot in, arms over your head. Now shorten your stance just a little bit. Pick your toes up, turn and face the right side of your room. And we're going to standing separate leg head to knee. Dange Mata Pipapta Mata Jani Shirasana. So tuck your chin to your chest, lift your belly button, and now come up and over and touch your forehead to your knee. So this is head to knee pose, which means it's totally fine to bend your right knee. You can put the hands on the floor outside your feet for balance. Standing separate leg head to knee pose. So forehead to knee. Now from that position, you can begin to try to lock your front leg. If you're flexible enough and you can already lock the leg, with the head touching, fantastic. If you can lock the knee with the head touching, then you can bring the hands back to a prayer position and you add a balance challenge to this pose. If you're tired like me, my hands are on the floor, I'm trying to use the strength of my arm, the weight of my head, to help me get the leg a little straighter. Now, for more advanced yogis, if the leg is locked, head and the knee are balancing, hands together, you get more advanced by working the forehead up. 
closer to the pelvis. This is a compression pose. We're trying to over compression. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to go up. All right, palms back together. Slowly come up, face that right side all the way up before you turn to your up. Now turn face the front. Now turn face the left. We're doing the same thing. Pull the navel in and slowly come up and over around the spine. Bend the knee as much as you need to. And then you bend a lot. That's totally okay. As your hamstring and, and posterior flexibility improves, the leg will get straighter. Right? If you really want to uh, get flexible, um, in these postures, do this class every day. Just put it on Steve. We're going to repeat. We're going to repeat. We're going to repeat. We're going to recite line by line. And no time at all. Of course, we do have some other U60 classes, same class by different, probably more fun teachers. But whatever. We're just playing Steve. All right. So you have your head on your knee. You're trying to strike the leg. Remember, as you get more flexible, right, the leg is straighter. You can bring the hands together, and eventually, forehead's coming towards the leg. All right, palms together. Slowly come up, face side, all the way up. Turn face the front, right leg back, arms. All right, we're going to close the standing series of this class with a little two-part posture. So come to the middle of your tower mat again, a little balancing posture to finish up. The first part is tree pose or tadasana. So shift your weight to your left leg, pick up your right foot with your left hand, grab the foot on the back side, your left palm is supinated or facing open. Gently drop the right knee down and back. So listen for any knee pressure or pain here. We don't want any of that. If it you can get the feedback there, just go to position where it doesn't hurt. Now right hand to half prayer position. And sitting nice and tall. If you are flexible enough and your foot will stay high up at this intersection of your thigh and pelvis, you can bring left hand to full prayer or not the start, but the foot slides down just keep hold it. Eventually, we want two knees and one line from the side. That requires great hip mobility. We're looking for that over time. Shoulders. Can you bring your shoulders down and back? Hips. For a lot of us, if you're really, you know, pulled to one side, we're slowly working on lifting up and leveling up. In time. And you may find it's very common that one leg you can bounce on. This applies all balancing posture. One leg you bounce on forever, and one leg you can fix, right? That's no big deal, it happens to a lot of us. All right, shift the weight now to your right foot, pick up your left foot with the right hand, gently drop the left knee down. You notice how Ben pulls it up high first? That makes a lot of people feel more comfortable. You bring the left knee down to that left hand to half prayer position. And if you have any knee pressure or knee pain, typically raising the knee up higher alleviates that. So get nice and tall. If this is no problem for you at all, you're like, I can stay here all day. Right, bring your right hand to full prayer, and you can balance there. Relax and breathe, shoulders down and back. You guys make it look easy. Okay, left leg down. If you're not making it look this easy, don't worry. These are paid professionals. The stuff we got, it was in jail. All right, so part two of this, we're going to start a tree and progress to toasting. I highly recommend if you're very uncomfortable with tree, you just do tree again. Once you feel very comfortable with tree and it's relatively easy, right, then I recommend going to the top. But you know, you're you, you make your own choices uh, in your own uh, living room, I guess. All right, shift the weight to your left foot. Pick up your right foot with the left hand. Gently drop the right knee down and back. Right hand goes to half prayer. And on this one, part two, everyone can bring left hand to full prayer, even if the foot slides down. So this is my base part I personally like to use. Fold from the hips. Can you put the pants on the floor in front of you? If you're really tight, then you may just work in that mid-range somewhere. Put your hands down. Once you meet your hands on the ground, you can unload the knee, the weight comes in your hands, you can bend the left knee and sit on down. Right? And so we're going into a little one leg squat here with our right heel on our knee. Kat is doing this great in between phase. Let's say she's really tight, she's flexible. So let's just say, you can straight leg a little bit, Kathy. Let's say this is maybe where you're trying to get. You might be hovering and trying to get your hands out. That's a great intermediate pose. Bend all the way down. He's going to bring his left hand up. And if he gets his left hand up, he's going to bring his right hand up. If he can get both hands up, that's totally counted by the way. He's going to look in the mirror or the, 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 you know, whoever's in front of him, what, whatever's kids are doing, harassing him. Right? All right, we're slowly add down the posture. Ideally, opposite of the way you went in with this one. Sometimes that's not an option. I can't anyway. Change the right hand down. So for my stiffer athletes, my stiffer yogis, right? If this is your posture right there, that's Totally fine. 
I, I prefer that than like going on a leap of faith and just diving and hoping you land somewhere. Because as you do more yoga, that hand's going to get closer and closer and closer. You're going to get further and further down, and eventually your hand's on the ground. Let's try it. Shift the weight with the right foot, pick up your left foot with the right hand. And now left hand up to half print. Right hand up to full print. And so begin to fold forward. Can you get your hands on the ground with the legs straight? That's pretty, it's a pretty good amount of flexibility. If you get the hands down, bend the knee, sit down on the heel. If you're, uh, if you can do that, like, oh, what's the big deal? No problem, it's super easy. The, the tight people like myself already don't like you. This is how we are. Uh, jealous, we have flexibility in feet. All right, if you're down there, bring your left hand up. Yes, the left hand again on this side, too. Then the right hand up. If you can get both hands up, go for a by one. Come on here. Yes, give yourself a high five. You've earned it. Change slowly. Come up. So we're finishing the standing stretch up the top. Turn around and relax on your back in Savasana. So Savasana is dead man's pose. It's a relaxation pose. It is the most important posture in yoga. Uh, all we ask is you have your simple water. And we, our instruction is to have your arms by your side, palms up, and just breathe. So we're going to do a set of savasana between every set of every posture in the floor series, which is next. That's the, the remaining posture postures in this class. Some of our savasanas will be on our back, and some will be on our stomach. But either way, what we're working on is going from maximum relaxation to maximum contraction back in the pose. So you're going to get good at working, resting, working, resting. And as you do it more, you get better at resting. You get better at relaxing quickly. Just Searching your body for tension and letting go, that's a great skill to have, be able to relax and rest quickly. All right, so this has been our first Savasana. Next is going to be Palavana Vakasana Windu Moving Pose. So you're going to interlace, you're going to bend your right knee, interlace tip fingers below the right kneecap, and you're going to pull the right knee towards your right shoulder. So this therapists do a version of this posture it's called the Thomas Test, named after is a therapist named Thomas to test the length of your hip flexors. So if you can't touch your knee to your right shoulder, you know, you probably have some tight hip flexors. That means the wall. But hip flexors, right, when they're really stiff, we find that they upstream, they can, you know, pull on the spine, cause some back pain. Downstream, they can pull the knees, not unnecessary tension on the knees. So we really do want to work on the length of our one joint hip flexors and then our two joint hip flexors with some of the quadriceps. And that's going to help change right leg down. Relax the right leg, bend the left knee, pull the left knee. Then go around the, the hip and then back into the left shoulder. So we were compressing the ascending cone on the right side and we did the first side. Now we're compressing the descending cone. Ben, long ago, walked in. I remember the day he was first class and walked in and said, Hey, do you guys compress the cone in here? And I said, Yes, we do. And he was like, Sweet! I'm super excited. That's what I'm here. And so, he never left, he's been compressing the colon ever since. Change, left leg down. Now bend both knees, reach your arms around, grab the opposite elbow. Uh, if you are unable to grab your elbows, try to get as high as you can, pull the knees to the chest. You're compressing the transverse colon in the middle. So Pavanamakasana directly translates to, uh, you know, in, in Sanskrit as, as cannibal. It's the original cannibal. And if you don't believe me, Go check out Wikipedia. There's a picture of Gandhi jumping into the uh, Ganges with the ladies washing their hair going, Pavana Mantasana! And they were like, freaking Gandhi. I think Gandhi is never going to amount to anything. True story, except for the last two minutes. Change. Legs down and relax on your back and so on. So now that your colon has been compressed, Monica Campos, she, she called it, she's like, Steve, I need more colon compression. Can we do a second set? No, Monica, we don't have time. We, we gotta move on. You can do one extra one at home. All right. Next is gonna be our first yoga sit up. So, Kathy, will you turn up a side so we can see as well? Uh, this is gonna be a yoga sit up. It's gonna be a double exhale. We're nice and strong. We're gonna exhale twice once we reach up and once as we grab all our toes and a little forward bending strike. So, if it's your first class, just watch the first one. We'll do some more. All right, arms over your head. Cross your thumbs, flex your feet, and a house it up. And I get a little stretch. I look just like that too. All right, turn around, and we're gonna face the front of your room. 
they're watching the TV or face me, we have the spine series. Full posture, working on spine strength and integrity and mobility. All right, so first a couple of those, Bhujan Dasana. Uh, eventually, if you watch this class every day, you'll learn all the Sanskrit names. This is one of the most fun parts of this job. All right, all those close to the body, fingertips are at the tops of the deltoids. You have one cobra tail, your toes and ankles touching each other. A nice big inhale. And now look up and lift up. Pull the upper body up off the ground. Set the gaze to the sky. And we're trying to get up to the belly button up off the ground. Now, it's not upward dog, right? So we're not locking our elbows or pushing our arms. We're trying to focus on our back straight. Hips, low back, middle back, upper back. So you can use the arms a little bit, right? But really squeeze the back side of the body. Small continuous sips of air. 20% in, 20% out. Change. Lower down. Now look to your right. So your left is the tail. You're in Savasana or your stomach. So this is 80 20, bringing that 20% in, 20% out. It means we have big breath, we fill the intra abdominal cavity, but we don't want to exhale completely. So what you'll find in a partial like cobra, what we're going to do again is if you exhale completely, you'll kind of collapse, right? We need some air for these spine postures to help us stay strong. But at the same time, we want you to breathe. So when you lift up, I want you to, you know, full breath of air in this next set, and then once you're up there, keep breathing, 20% in, 20% out, continuous sips of air. Let's give it a shot. So arms up on your shoulders, elbows close to the body, tops of feet, flat the floor. You have one cobra tail. Big inhale, look up and lift up. Wrap the body up, shoulders down away from the ears. You're going to pull your shoulders to get jeans on from your back pockets, unless you have those jeans, those Western jeans from the 90s where they had those pockets on them. Either way, you know what I mean. Now you're breathing 20% out, 20% in. Keep lifting, keep wrapping. Change slowly down, go right side of the room, right here in the tail. Until we all we're on the floor or on our stomach, we alternate looking side to side. So we get this gentle, easy back stretch. When I started this series 16 years ago, 17, 17 years ago, it was even painful. And hard for me to lay down like this because my neck is so stiff from doing so much office work. So if that's you, uh, it does get better. And when you're new, it gets better pretty quickly. Right? So just keep practicing every day. All right. Now we have locust post on the basana. Roll the arms up on the torso. Palms are down. Think of that if you want to play volleyball, it's a volleyball club. Now you may find this uncomfortable. Many people do. I do. We're working that probably means we've got to work on our thoracic mobility and our shoulder mobility a little bit. Get those hands close together. Just keep pushing. It's unlikely anything's going to go wrong. Now, looking forward in the mirror, parts one or two, lift the right leg up off the ground. Lock the right knee. So you're working on that yoga bum right here. Squeeze the glutes. Lift that right leg up. The left leg is fairly relaxed. That right leg's going higher and higher and higher and higher. Change right leg back. Relax the right leg. And now lift your left leg up. Lock the knee. Point the toe. Reach it up off the ground. Turn the big toe to the side. Squeeze the hip. Keep on lifting. Lay up. More up. Go up. Reach up. Toes up. Change. Now we're going to do part three, which is both legs. So here we'll tuck the chin down to the towel. And if you can reestablish the grip, it tends to slide out. The closer you can get your hands toward the knees, the more leverage you will have. And this is a great opportunity to take advantage of your upper body strength. So you can really get high if you use your arms here. Get a good setup position with the mouth facing down. Push with your arms and now lift both legs up. Toes come up, feet come up, reach up off the ground. Knees got to legs up, more up, lift up, reach up, toes up, go up, way up, change. Roll the arms out. Look at the right side of the room. Left hip. We'll just do that one once. We're moving into. Uh, Full locus or close on the basa, but next, that's going to be like the airplane posture. We're going to do this one once as well. So you got one shot at it, make it count. Arms out wide like airplane wings. Don't reach out and touch your neighbor. We're social distancing here. Toes and heels together. Big inhale, look up and lift up. Raise your hands up, raise your chest up, reach up off the ground. Legs coming higher, squeeze the knees together, toes together, and now reach up high. Think of yourself as more of a biplane. Little F14 Tomcat. Keep on reaching. Legs up. Go up. Lift up. Reach up. Change. Look at the left side of the room. Arms by side. 
We have one more posture in the spine series, and then we're taking it home for a few more for that. This last one is floor bow or donorasa. And so we'll do two sets, and when you're able, you grab both at a time. But if you're on the tighter side, you might have to grab one leg at a time. Kathy, can I have you demonstrate this one leg at a time? And Ben's gonna do both legs. So go ahead and grab your feet just below the toes. Kathy's gonna, gonna demonstrate, say she can only do one if she was stiffer, right, tighter. And if you're doing that, you can reach your right arm forward and grab your left leg. Ben's got both legs, here we go. For Ben, roll the way forward. Now both of you kick the feet up, kick the legs up, reach up off the ground. Try to extend, think about straightening the legs. Right? I can do a leg extension. That's going to pull you open and do a really big stretch. The temptation is to spread the knees out. Please keep his legs in within six inches. Lift up, reach up, roll forward, reach up, change, and down. Look to the right side of the room. And so, obviously, if you did one leg, your left leg on the first set, you do right leg on the set, or vice versa. Uh, unless if you have some sort of injury, and you're not able to have that foot, you can do, you can do the other leg toss. It's, it's unlikely you will walk around in circles. <laughs> All right, second set. Grab the opposite leg if you're doing one at a time, or both legs if you're able to do both. From here, roll the leg forward now, and kick up, and lift up. Extend the knees, straighten the legs. Use your leg strength to really intensify this stretch. Pull the upper body up, roll forward and lift, kick up and lift, toes up and lift, reach up and lift, Change down to the left side of the And that's the spine So now that we're really warm, we're going to finish with a few more postures, and these are our deepest stretching poses of the day. So get ready. Make sure you're monitoring your breath, and we're going to get some range of motion. Go ahead and push yourself up. Sit down in a Vajrasana. That's kind of the classic Eastern kneeling position. You want to sit water, it's a great time to do it. And this next firm, this next posture is fixed firm pose. So step one, slide your heels apart, and ideally your bum is resting on the floor. If you were like me when I started, it just hurts to sit in Vajrasana. You have your hands in front of you. You can do what you need to do to take pressure off. Now, if you can get your bum down the ground, bring your right hand to your right foot, left hand to the left foot, right elbow down, left elbow down. Right shoulder down, left shoulder down. Listen to your body. If your joints are screaming at you, it's going to take some time. I believe that laying all the way down is a great indication of good mobility and joint health. If you're all the way down, you can reach your arms over your head and grab the opposite elbows. If you're like me, if you were a runner, you've got a lot of military here at San Antonio, a lot of paratroopers. Um, if you, who knows, a lot of high impact or, or Sports. Maybe you did tons of exercise in the 90s and stuff like that, like me, right? It may take some time. You've accumulated trauma there. Well, this will get better, I promise, and you've got to stick with it, but breathe. This posture is fantastic for teaching you how to master pain with breath. You're welcome. Change. Slowly come up. One arm at a time. Turn around and relax on your back. If you hold your breath, if you're if you're in so much, there's so much tension, so much pain, your breath is shallow, it's gonna be very hard to get a group of Breath controls the nervous system, your nervous system controls the length of your muscles and what your body allows you to do. So this is why yoga is fantastic for improving flexibility because that helps you calm down, right? Let's do a step. Arms over your head, rock it up, flex your feet, and it helps it up. All right, so we're going to fix firm pose to article boss and a half forest pose. This is a nice relaxation pose. So kneeling again, probably towards the back of your towel mat because we're going to use a towel to help us for a grip. So flip the towel over um, the heels. I'm oh, sorry, not that one yet. The arms up over your head. Good side. Cross the thumbs. And now, keeping the hips down, slowly bend forward. So this is a deep forward bend. So you'll notice in this series, really throughout the series, you go from a backward bend to a forward bend. We alternate back and forth. Even in the balancing postures, right? We do from standing head to knee, a forward bend, to standing bow, which is a backward bend. So we're always alternating back and forth. I want you to go get your head to the floor here. And for many of us, if you're really tight, if you have that power ab, 
you might have to bring your knees wider, and that's okay, but I want you to relax. If you are hovering with great tension and suffering and your head up off the ground on this posture, we're not getting the desired effect. So I want you to go to relax. Reach your arms. It doesn't mean you're not active. You're actively reaching your arms forward. I want your head on the ground and breathe. And now we're going to check it. So squeeze the knees together. Core strong. Come up. Opposite of the way you went in. Arms come down. Relax in your back. So the next posture after this savasana is going to be camel pose, ushasana. It's our deepest backward bit of the day. Another great benchmark for mobility. I often struggle with it. If this posture is going to be hard for you, great. Use it as a benchmark. As you do more, you practice more, it's going to get better. And it really is fantastic for opening up chest, shoulders, hips. Areas that our modern society, we all get very kind of stiff, short, and tight. Let's do a so. Arms over your head, cross your thumbs, flex your feet, inhale, sit up. Big sit up, I got the toes, you can't grab the toes, just reach forward. And now turn around, stand up on your knees. We're going to do two sets of this. First one, knees are about hip with distance apart. Feet are crossing the same distance, your lower legs are roughly parallel. You're going to bring your hands to your hips, fingers down, thumbs down. Drop your head back nice and easy. Back your spine up, all around. Try to keep your hips. Now, if you can see a wall behind you, if you drop your right hand to your right heel, left hand to your left heel, you're grabbing the heels, thumbs on the outside, on the inside. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, push your hips forward. If you need to leave your hands and the hips on the hips, that's fine. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, hips forward. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hips forward. And slowly come up one at a time. Support yourself. And turn around. Relax your back. So, if you're like many of our students who feels like you're going to die in that posture, maybe you feel dizzy, nauseous, lightheaded, don't worry. It's just your karma. You were a bad tumble roach in your former life, and you're getting what you deserve. Or maybe you're not used to deep backward bends while struggling and working hard. That could be it too. Either way, it will get better. And so, just keep trying again. The key is to breathe. And as that gets easier, as you're more flexible, you're going to feel better in that posture. Let's do it again. Arms over your head, cross your thumbs, flex your feet, and then I'll sit up. All right, turn around. Second set. Now, if you felt really stiff in the first set, try bringing your knees wider. Your feet can still stay about six inches, but opening the knees up makes it a little more reachable for some of us. Then when you turn and face one side or the other, to the side of you. All right, hands in the low back, fingers down, thumbs down. Inhale, lift up, and exhale, come up over and back. Maybe you're staying right here with your hands on the hips. We're going to ultimately progress to right hand to right heel, left hand to left heel, thumbs on the outside, fingers on the inside. Both Kathy have been of amazing flexibility, so they're very open to the shoulders and chest. If that's not you, don't worry. Just keep breathing. Keep stretching. You're going to get it. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, hips forward. Inhale, open up. Exhale, hips forward, change, come up, turn around, and relax. So this uh, posture is peculiar in the way that lots of people who feel um, sometimes get very emotional. If you feel like crying on that pose, you are not the first one or the hundredth one. Right? That happens all the time. I think we just take a whole lot of stress in our chest, shoulders, upper body. And as that begins to release, um, you might feel some emotions there, totally normal, right? And especially during this time, maybe for some reason you might be stressed right there. Right? Well, hopefully use the class there to relax. All right, let's do a sit. Arms over your head, cross your thumbs, flex your feet. Inhale, sit up. Turn around, and now we're doing rabbit pose, sasangasana, kneeling towards the back of your towel mat. The reason that I got excited earlier is because I love saying the Sanskrit for this pose. So put the towel over your heels. Can we turn to the side? Um, because this just adds a little friction, right? Where you're still gonna grab the heels, try to put your towel over. You know, it's just kind of a, it's gonna be a lot of towel here. Right? And so all that does, he's still grabbing his feet, okay, but that towel just adds a little, a little friction so it's easier to grab. Tuck your chin to your chest, like a rolling pulley or a doodle bug, roll like a little ball, one vertebra at a time. Touch your forehead to your knees, suck the stomach in, 
This is a maximum compression posture. You squeeze the heels together, and then roll forward, thighs pointing straight up to the sky. So, if you have long legs and a short torso, this posture is going to feel pretty easy for you. If you have a long torso and short legs, you know, for your height, this may be a little more difficult. If your knees are not touching your forehead, then slowly over time, with an inch by inch, millimeter by millimeter, work the forehead in or knees in close to the forehead. It is a compression posture. If you're not feeling a big stretcher, don't worry. It's not required. Okay. Now left and around. Relax. It's awesome. Lay on your mat. And Instagram, we're going to be right back. I'm nearing the, the uh, hour mark, so we're like a pause and then play. It's just hold on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where you're at. Try to build and flex your feet. Let's do this up. And help it up. All right, turn around, face the front of the room, or head to knee with stretching. We're back. Instagram, you missed nothing except us doing a sit up, which we did awesome. All right, right leg out the front right corner of the room, fold your left foot to the right inner thigh, lift your arms up over your head, and only saw all 10 fingers come up over and down and grab your right foot. Bend the knee as much as you need to to touch your head to your knee. So this is just John Yusharasana. Earlier we did standing head to knee, five name on a John Yusharasana. So now it's just playing John Yusharasana, head to knee pose. So we want to have the head on the knee, which means bending the knee if you need to, but then you're able to grab the foot, and now you can begin to use the strength in your grip to help straighten the leg out over time. So if you're tighter, head to knee first, and we slowly get the leg straight. Roll away to the inside, which actually if you're more flexible here, I want you to pull the elbows down to pull the heel up off. So when you can squeeze the quadricep muscle there, when you can contract the quad and the heel pops up, that's when you know your leg is locked. Change, go left, left leg out, turn the front left corner of your tower mat, sold your right foot to the left of the thigh, if you can get any knee pain in this posture, you can try with both legs out wide. That, that helps a lot of people too with the hurting knees. Arms over your head, come up over and down and grab your left foot. Bend the knee if you need to, head to knee pose. So the reason we have head to knee is a compression as well as a stretch. We know the benefits of extension of flexibility. We don't quite know the benefits, uh, you know, medically of compression yet, but we've been doing it for thousands of years, so uh, there's gotta be something to it. So we get compression, is the opposite of, of stretching, right? So pull the toes back, pull the elbows down, right knee down, right elbow down on this side. If you can lock the knee, if you make a lock, and you make a muscle with your left quad, you can pull the heel up off the ground. Change, come up. Now we have both legs. So lie, both legs out for you. Lie back, let's do a sit up, and some kind of readjust. Grab the toes. And we like to use our peace fingers and thumbs here. Grab your big toes, it's gonna walk the hips back. What we're trying to do is get yourself a little more forward on your sit bones, all right? And if you're tighter, bend the knees. That's fine. I want a nice tall spine. If you're really flexible, legs are locked, you have no problem grabbing, that's great too. So if you're tighter, think about chest up through tall spine and try to lock your legs out, push them over time. If you can already do that, you're going to try to touch your forehead to your toes. So here we go. Inhale. Exhale, begin. So as you try to increase the stretch, exhale. When you've done exhaling, hold that new range of motion, and then inhale, holding the range of motion on the next exhale, see if you can go a little bit deeper. So if your legs are locked, on the exhale, you're trying to get your head down closer to the toes. If your knees are bent, on the exhale, you're trying to push the feet away from your chest a little bit. Let's do one more breath. Inhale, big breath, hold it. And then exhale, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. Change. Come up. Turn around and relax on your back. All right. So we have one rotation pose left, and then we have our final breathing. So we're almost there. I know you tend to get tired during the class. Refocus your energy. You're almost home. Let's do a sit up. Arms over your head. Cross your thumbs. Flex your feet. And a hell sit up. All right. And I want you to turn to your left. So we're. Well, big on face up here. That's his right. So it really doesn't matter which way you're going. So you're turning and you're going to bend your left knee and point it towards the side of the room. Just like that. You measure. You're then going to bring your right foot up and over and put the right foot on the left side of the left knee. You will then reach your left arm up. Wrap it around and press the knee back and grab the left knee with your left hand. 
If you are unable to have a knee, you are then doing, you grab part of your yoga mat or towel. I like that right hand right behind you to help you jump nice and tall. And then if you can do that without falling over or do this, you can wrap your hand around behind your little back. Inhale, stretch up nice and tall. Exhale, to look over the right shoulder and foot. Inhale, stretch up, chest up. Exhale, and twist. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, and twist. Change. Gently on one. Now we switch legs. We're not going to bend your right knee forward. We're going to go left one up and over. And then you'll reach your right arm up, wrap it around, press the left knee back with your right upper arm and grab the right knee. What we're looking for here is knee, hand, and uh, ankle all are on the same place. The temptation is people will think they bring their foot way back here. We want these all as close together as possible. Now, inhale, stretch up tall, from the bottom of the spine up. Exhale, begin to rotate and twist. Inhale, stretch up middle back, thoracic spine. Exhale. Rotate and switch. And now one more time. Inhale, stretch up the top, the bottom of the top, and now the head comes around. Gentle, easy stretch and twist, twist, twist. You're bringing it out. Change. Turn around and relax here. Quick savasana before the final. Well, so this will be our last sit up of the day. This is going to be your best sit up yet. So arms over your head, cross your thumb, left your feet. Inhale, classic cross legged style. But if you're at home, I, I love working on the kneeling so you can put some pillows underneath your, your bum or books and begin to get used to this position because it will make you feel better. But this is a couple body breathing, it's a breath of fire. We're going to pull the belly in as we exhale. We're not trying to chest breathe. So if you find yourself moving your shoulder or chest, but right, really work to blow from the belly. It may take a few sessions. I know when I tried the first time I did that. Go with one. So, arms straight, palms down, belly breathing. Inhale, big in. Final savasana, and just let your Monica doing her extra bit of pose. Right, bend to my final savasana. So, a couple announcements. We at two o'clock, we're actually going to have a just added thirty-minute power yoga class, and then at four o'clock, we're going to have a power fusion as well. There'll be new links up on the website, Zoom links if you need to follow. Of course, we'll be live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. But two and four, so two, four, and six, you got three more classes a day doing this live. You need something to do, you're at home, do all of them, um, but don't hurt yourself. Please be safe at home, relax, enjoy the time, and uh, we'll see you.